Hi, I'm Mike Ballantyne, and in the next 10 slides, I will present some background information on myself. Despite my constant travels, family has always been an important element of my life. My wife, La, and I are living in Vietnam, along with my youngest son, Bruce. My oldest son, Jordan, is a semi-pro boxer, and whilst he no longer dreams of being the next heavyweight champion, he still has not taken the step to build a personal career. Jordan has taught me patience. Austin is my second son and works hard to demonstrate that he is not his brother. Austin joined the Air Force at my urging, but chose to specialize in special forces. He knows how much it annoys me that he is training NATO troops on how to fly drones. Audrey is a wonderful daughter who spends her time with music and learning languages. Audrey studies English, French, Chinese, and Vietnamese. She will be the diplomat of the family. William is my son in Africa, and his single dream is to come to America. Bruce, like Audrey, is studying multiple languages. In his kindergarten program, he studies English, Chinese, and Vietnamese. Bruce likes Lego Chimas and Power Rangers. Unless, of course, Blue's Clues is playing on TV. I recently moved to Da Nang to take up the post as Dean of Operations at Pegasus International Uni College. Previously, I chaired the English Language Department, and my promotion is a result of an early retirement by the Dean of the College. If only I had finished my PhD. Da Nang is a lovely beach town with great weather, clean air, and a thriving economy. Unfortunately, my wife is remaining in Hanoi until the end of the year for financial reasons, but my son Bruce came with me to escape the heavy air pollution of Hanoi. Although he misses his mom, he enjoys going to the beach every Sunday morning. The rest of my children are in schools or living on their own around the world. I grew up in Philadelphia, and as a teen my family fell upon hard times. My mother enrolled my two brothers and I in Milton Hershey School, a school for underprivileged children that promotes vocational education and entrepreneurship with the intent to create Horatio Alger realities. I credit much of my personal drive to succeed from my time at Hershey. When I graduated from Hershey, I began my college studies at Dickinson College. I chose Dickinson because I could maintain my friendships from high school, continue my work with the Boy Scouts, and study Hebrew. At the time, I wanted to be an archaeologist and study cultures. Later, I realized I might need a job and chose economics. I have a passion for business and politics. Economics seems to be the unhappy marriage of the two. However, my economics degree was mostly theoretical, so I completed a diploma in business administration at night whilst working at a local bank during the day. In hindsight, I should have continued my studies and completed my MBA at the time. Now, I'm studying part-time to complete my MBA, but it is challenging with all the other activities. Soon after completing my business diploma, I left banking and began a career with a small flavor company. I saw a lot of potential and over 16 years helped grow the company from a small local outlet to an international manufacturer with operations in four countries. Much of that growth reflected my personal desire to engage in international trading, but it also reflected the economy and the reality of the 1990s. I traveled extensively around the world on every continent and set up and managed each of our processing centers. India was my least favorite country and Paris was always my favorite city. Why Vietnam? certainly not from any emotional ties from the previous war. Rather, in 2005, the vanilla market collapsed and my processing centers were closed. Rather than sit and wait five years or more for the market to recover, I chose to move on from the company. I had always planned on a career change at this point in my life, and the timing seemed right. I had established a small plantation with a friend in Phu Quoc, an island off the southern coast of Vietnam. I decided to go help him with the project instead of staying in Indonesia. After one year, 
it was clear that the project did not make economic sense. So I decided to begin teaching English because I had so many requests. This led to my opening an English center in Hanoi. And I ran the center for two years before selling it. One of the reasons I sold it was that I had taken up a lecturing position with Griggs Hanoi, teaching English and business. Teaching for Griggs was my baptism by fire as a lecturer. I had to develop a localized curriculum that would articulate to the Griggs USA curriculum, prepare lecture slides, deliver the classes, and provide counseling to the students. I taught English, business, literature, multiculturalism, Western civilization, research, and study skills during the two and a half years I was there. When I left Griggs, I came to the U.S. for the presidential campaign. Living abroad, I think it's easier to see the failures in the American system. Without the daily diatribe of Fox News and the MSNBC counterpoints, one can view America with a certain detachment and identify the obvious flaws. At times, I was embarrassed to admit I was an American, and I decided that I wanted to do something about it. I entered the internet presidential primary thinking I had no chance in the world to accomplish anything, I thought it would be a good way to build relationships for a future run for Congress. My surprise is that I did surprisingly well. The organization prematurely ended the contest just before the first runoff because they could not get what they wanted, a big name. They planned on three votes, taking the top six, then the top three, and finally the top two. I guess when a teacher from Hanoi makes it to the top six, it's time to throw in the towel. From that experience, I developed a relationship with Rocky Anderson, the number two guy, in the Americans Elect contest. I agreed to support his fledgling party by organizing Texas and serving on the National Steering Committee. I recently stepped down when I moved to Da Nang because of time constraints. However, in 2016, I will return to the U.S. for the campaign and support the party's efforts to elect some candidates. In 2020, I plan on making a run again for Congress. Over the years, my personal interests have changed. I have a strong environmental bent from my days in scouting and visiting farms around the world. Eventually, I will settle down and develop my own farm. In the past, I was active in scouting, but Vietnam does not allow scouting, so I am no longer involved. I remain affiliated with the Masons, and my personal philosophy reflects my deist beliefs. My future plans include completing my PhD at Andrews and running the college here in Vietnam. There are numerous opportunities for me once I earn my PhD, and I have no doubt that I can fund the posting. I want to run for Congress and potentially serve in the cabinet, because I believe I can make a difference in America. However, that requires a bit of money and a bit of luck. When I am finally ready to retire, I would like to set up a vanilla plantation either in Vietnam or in Australia. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.